and the sugar show continues. This past weekend, Sean O'Malley completed his destiny and became champion. And also, side note, I called it round in everything. Anyways, in my opinion, Sean O'Malley is the last super hyped Dana backed prospect since Conor McGregor to actually fulfill Dana's destiny and become champion after being such a hype prospect for a very long time now. And personally, Sean O'Malley was probably the first guy for me that I've ever followed all the way from the Contender Series to where he is now. Most of the time when these type of prospects are pushed to the fans, they have either shown that they don't have championship potential, they're not ready, or simply can't get the title one way or another. But in the case of Sean O'Malley, he consistently beat a vast majority of the guys he needed to beat, leveled up in competition, and finally made it to the big stage and against all odds, did exactly what he said he was going to do. So in today's video, we will explore the complete story of how Sean O'Malley went from a young hyped prospect to the top of his division and became champion. Starting off, I think the earliest memory of Sean O'Malley, at least for most fans, was his appearance in the Contender Series and who can forget the legendary commentary duo of Uriah Faber and Snoop Dogg. Looking back at this fight for the making of this video, he looks so damn young. This was before the 6'9 hair, and here he only was 22 years old. He would be fighting Alfred Kishakian, and Sean would actually be on the receiving end of pressure early, though briefly caught Alfred with a flying knee. Sean would be taken down and kept in the quote, take the booty position, though Sean would get up and continue to work comfortably with his back to the cage. They would continue to trade until Sean would land a sniper of a right hand in the middle of the octagon and drop Alfred and go for another flying knee. This time, Sean would back up Alfred and keep rocking him with clean straight punches until one of those shots dropped Alfred for good. Dana was hyped, Snoop Dogg was calling for a contract, and I think this was the fight that ultimately showed Sean's star potential with the way he fights. Sean would indeed get that contract as he went on to face Terion Ware in his official UFC debut and would spend most of the fight dancing with his back to the cage and picking his shots well. The Terion Ware would land a couple of well-timed right hands and bloody Sean's nose. And as both men continued to trade, this fight would slowly become a war with both guys being very, very tired. And though this fight got close at times, Sean would get the best of these exchanges and even took down Ware and teed off on him at the end of this fight, which would lead to Sean eventually getting this win via unanimous decision. Sean would continue this hot streak early in his career as he moved on to fight Andre Sukumtat and dominated him in the striking, however, in one of these exchanges. He would kick Sukumthat awkwardly on his arm and Sean would visibly hurt his foot as he immediately started hobbling. And in one of the worst game time decisions I've ever seen, Andre Sukumthat goes for the takedown even though Sean was clearly compromised standing up. Sean would actually get up somehow, still hobbling visibly, but again, Andre would go down for the takedown, which ultimately cost him this fight as Sean would go on to win this fight even though he didn't do much in the last round because he banked the first two and got the decision win. But Sean was still hurt and was still laying down on the octagon when the decision was read, though this would lead to the iconic Joe Rogan interview with Sean where they told each other they fucking loved each other and correct me if I'm wrong, but this was the first welcome to the sugar show that we got. Sean would take a two year break but come back with a magnificent performance over Jose Quinones. Starting this fight, Quinones would push the pace but again, Sean was comfortable moving backwards and sniping his shots. Eventually still in the first Sean would catch Quinones with a right hand, follow this up with a high kick, and end the fight with punches. In Sean's next fight, he would debut his iconic rainbow dyed hair against Eddie Wineland in the apex, and again, Sean would back up and dance on the cage, though Wineland would land a couple great right hands. Then out of nowhere, Sean would line him up with a 50 cal right hand and drop Wineland and walk off. I remember this performance in particular bringing Sean O'Malley to a much bigger audience because with this look, his style, and KO performance, it was hard to take your eyes off this guy. But this is where we get into a minor speed bump for the Sugar Show as Sean would go on to face the very skilled Marlon Cheeto Vera. And this fight started pretty normal with both guys feeling each other out until randomly Sean would go for a feint and tweak something in his ankle, the same ankle he hurt in the Sukumthat fight. Then again, just moments later, Sean would try to move forward and his right ankle would roll out of nowhere. Though unlike Sukumthat, Cheeto recognized it immediately and put the pressure on Sean. Sean would try to return fire but fell again on that ankle and Cheeto would close the show with nasty grounded pound and ended it with a powerful elbow. 
And though this would bring the first loss to Sean's career, Sean would not recognize this as a loss and would continue to say he was undefeated due to the way he lost this one. And every time Bruce Buffer would announce his record, Sean would put up a zero any time Bruce said one loss. Anyways, this quote unquote loss would catapult him into an exciting finish streak. The first fight of this streak was a little weird, but also kind of fun. Sean would fight again in the apex against Thomas Almeida and immediately put on a striking clinic and even dropped Almeida in the first round with a nasty left high kick to left hand combination. But when it looked done, Sean tried to walk off KO, giving Almeida time to recover, which led to Almeida surviving round one. The second round would be pretty quiet with Sean trying to find another opening and Almeida continuing to try to hang in there. Then finally towards the end of the third, Sean would find another left hand and drop Almeida but again hesitate and try to walk off KO, though this time Sean walked up and landed the final hammer of a right hand and actually end the fight. The next fight was a steamroll for Sean. Chris Moutinho would be a last minute replacement for Sean and would also be Moutinho's UFC debut. And well, the fight played out exactly how everybody thought it would. At one point, he was launching high kicks, straight right hands from nowhere, and then dropped Moutinho in the first while dribbling an imaginary basketball. And in the final seconds of the first, Sean tees off again and then drops Almeida with a straight right hand. It was so insane that Sean set a new bantamweight record with the most significant strikes landed in one round. Though credit to Moutinho as he kept walking forward in the second while Sean continued to tee off on his face with straight punches. But he did nothing in the third. I mean, look at these numbers. Eventually, towards the end of this fight, Sean would land literally every strike he threw and finish Moutinho with him still standing. Finally, Sean would make quick work of Halloween Peva in the first round, knocking him down with a sniper right hand and finishing him with a barrage of punches on the cage. The next fight would end the streak, but was pretty anticlimactic as Sean would face Pedro Munoz. And just when things were heating up, Sean would accidentally poke Munoz as he extended his hand to back up. And looking back, it doesn't look that bad, but apparently there was an actual abrasion to the eye as Munoz would release a medical report showing it, though Sean would claim that it was a punch that swallowed up and scratched Munoz's eye, but whatever the case may be, this ended in a no contest and ended Sean's streak. So now we get to this point. Sean O'Malley is a huge star and prospect in the UFC because of his colorful look and equally colorful style in the ring. But I remember a lot of people at this time were very skeptical of Sean's true ability. I mean, yeah, he looked great in this streak, but I mean, he did it to guys that were unranked and not the best competition. Thomas Almeida, Haul and Peva, Eddie Wineland, and Chris Moutinho were great performances, but none of them were close to ranked, with Moutinho literally making his debut. So with this collection of wins, some fans wondered if he was good enough to be on that next level. But in his next fight, Sean would get a huge opportunity to prove to the haters he was truly championship level by leapfrogging all the way to the former champ, Pyotr Jan. And Sean was ranked number 11 and Jan literally just lost the belt the fight before, making him the number one contender. But Sean came in this fight confident and proved he belonged in the octagon with a former champ early in this fight. Immediately in the first, Sean did his thing, dancing on the outside, picking apart Jan with a lot of straight punches and even defended a takedown attempt from Jan. Though the second time Jan came in for a takedown with pure strength, he took down Sean O'Malley. But what really impressed me was Sean O'Malley's composure as he took his time to get up on his feet and took advantage of his leg flexibility and continued where he left off, landing straight punches down the middle, even going for a takedown himself. The second round would start off hot with Sean landing a nasty left hand that definitely shook Jan followed by a right and had Jan backing up defensively. But Jan would come back with a nasty left hand of his own, taking down Sean and beating him up. Sean got up but Jan would put him down briefly with a sneaky trip and continue to beat up Sean with momentum on his side, getting a takedown towards the end. By this point, in my opinion, I had it 1-1 with Sean taking the first and Jan taking the second, so now it comes down to the third, but with such a close fight, this round would be a slow burn up until the middle of the round when Sean opened up Jan with a left hand, and the two would trade nasty strikes until Jan shot for the takedown, but Sean would moments later get back up. Now this is where it would get controversial at the end of this fight with Sean getting a very close split decision. I go back and forth on who won this fight. Originally, I thought Pyotr Jan won, but looking back, I think Sean got the better of the exchanges in the last round, but this could be recency bias. 
But either way, this fight really showed that Sean could hang with the absolute best, and he would prove that with his next fight, which was for the belt. And I don't think I have to break down this fight too much. The UFC, for the first time I've ever seen, uploaded the finish immediately, but Sean was able to get that right hand that he's always landed in his career right down the middle on Aljamain's chin, knock him down, and finished him with a barrage of punches to finally complete his destiny and become champ. So what do you guys think? Will the Sugar Show continue? How long will he stay champ? And who will be the first guy he's gonna defend the belt against? Will it be Marlon Vera to get back that loss? Or will it be Marab to also try to get back that loss? Anyways, again, thank you guys for supporting these videos. Peace.